all works because conformal mapping is important, which is figuring out where what uh, images uh, images and stuff of complex functions. And then also the Mobius transformation is also important. But let me go back. I'm just going to do today. I'm just going to do a few examples. So the first example I want to do is to show you is this. Let's so, let's so we find the image of the real part of Z equals three under the mapping W equals Z squared. Okay, now, in general, there are what I consider there's two main ways that you can go about finding images. One of them is to just kind of use shortcuts and um, and, and uh, just if you have some kind of understanding of what the mapping does, then you can do it that way. But if you're just kind of going into it and you have no idea, then here's the tactics that you can use. So, um, so essentially, let, let me let me. This is the real part of you. So let me just kind of give you an idea of what what of what we're what we're trying to do. Hopefully. Okay. So here, this is the the real axis and the imaginary axis. Okay. And then real part equals three. That would be over here at three, a vertical line. At three. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is if you take each point on this vertical line and you square it, then what object you get over here? Okay, what's this object going to look like over here? Okay, so sometimes you can kind of reason with it, and and if you have a you know, if you have a basic idea of what the function does, then you can work with it, work, work with it that way, and you can come up with an answer that way. But if not, then one of the things you can do is the following. I kind of show you how how this works. So um, now, another thing that's good to point out here is that the real axis is over here in the domain is refer is uses the variable x. And the imaginary use the variable y. In the range, it's typical to use u and v. So u is the real axis in the range, though, and then v is the imaginary axis in the range. Okay. So if you take, um, as you can see, we have here's the mapping right here, and you can rewrite that as you can write the w. So this is the this is the this is the z variable. This is the w variable. So you can rewrite the w as u plus i v, and you can rewrite the z as x plus i y. That's typical. That's just standard notation of how to do that. Okay, and then and then work with, work with it this way. See what happens. See if you can. The, the objective is to come up with a formula in u and z. Okay, and then thinking that the u variable is kind of like your x variable and the v is kind of like your y variable and see if you see if you can come up with something. Okay. Um, well, that, that's pretty, this one's pretty simple already, but you can multiply that, that out. So that's x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi, right? And um, for those to be, And then, and then another thing that you can do is it's saying you want to fake this. Um, you want to you want to map this guy right here, right? The real part of z equals three. Okay, so this is the same as saying x equals three. So you come down and you put threes in right there and there. So this becomes three squared, or I'll go ahead and write that as a nine. This becomes a three here, so that's gonna be um, six y i, okay? So this condition right here eliminated the 
all the x's from the equation. It's just the nature of what 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 this was. So eliminate all the x's. And then um, you can equate the real part. And you can equate the imaginary part. And you come up with that. So u is the u is nine minus y squared and v is six y. So ignoring the, the i's because you know so essentially if you have one complex number being equal to another one or complex expression being equal to another complex expression, the real parts have to match up and the imaginary parts have to match up. So that's really two equations that you have right there if you're looking at real at real numbered equations. Okay. So here, y is going to be v over 6. And you can plug that into here. So remember, I said earlier, I don't know if anybody caught it, but I said that the objective is to find, get an equation in, in u and v, in x's and y's. And this is what we have. Okay. So, and also another thing I said is this is the U is like your is kind of like an X and the V is kind of like a Y. So what kind of object is that? So if we had if we had this, then you would probably be able to tell what, what object it is. What mathematical object does this represent in Cartesian coordinates? So anybody? Parabola. Yes, that's a parabola, and it open. It's um, the vertex is going to be here at at nine, right? And it's going to open up to the left, like this. Okay, so um, this is the image right here. This is a perfectly good way to write down what the image is. Right here, u equals nine minus uh, v over six squared. That's a perfectly good way to write down the image. And um, this is what the graph is gonna look like right here. Okay, so that's one way to do this sort of thing. Um, so let's take a, let's say, let me say a few things about um, Mobius transformations in general. So let me just start with this example right here. And one thing that I really want to emphasize about these is that circles and lines are going to map into circles and lines with the Mobius transformation. So if it, if it is Oh yeah, so much stuff there. So if it's so if it's of this form, this is the form for our Mobius transformation. If it's in that form, then when you're looking at mappings, then if you have a circle, that's going to map into either a, a line or a circle. If you have a line, that's also going to map to either a line or a circle. Okay, so think about this mapping right here, Mobius transformation. Let's suppose, um, so let me just ask a question here. Let's suppose that we have, I think about this. Um, let's suppose that we will be given a circle okay, or a line. Um, 
And here's a question to think about. How can we tell what the image will be? How can we tell, and more particularly, how can we tell if it's a circle? And when is it going to be a circle? And when is it going to be a, when is the image going to be a line? How can we tell from, if we're given, because we're going to be given a circle or a line, how can we tell if that circle or line is going to map to a circle or if it's going to map to a line? Okay, so think about that for a, a few seconds. And then maybe I'll give you some hints. So I said, before that a line is a lot of um, mathematicians consider the lines in the complex plane to be circles um, except it's a circle that goes through infinity right okay so a line goes through infinity circle doesn't go through infinity Okay, so how can we tell do we have a if we have a circle or a line, how can we tell if this is gonna map it if this is gonna map one of those points on the circle or line to infinity or whether it's not gonna map any of the points on the circle line to infinity? Or more importantly, what point does this map to infinity what point does this does this particular mobius transformation map to infinity is it zero zero two zero okay if you plug a zero in then that's zero that's zero you're going to get i right so it doesn't map zero to infinity negative one negative one if you plug a negative one in that the denominator is going to be zero, so that's going to be that's going to be that's going to map to infinity. Okay, so the answer is negative one. So if you have a circle, and that circle, um, okay, you have a circle or a line. If that circle goes through negative one. So, um, wait, this would be, let me erase that because that's kind of confusing now. Okay, so you can tell that it's going to be a line if it contains, if contains uh, negative one. It's going to be a circle if it doesn't contain. negative one, okay? So I'm talking about this original. So if you have a circle, and that circle goes through negative one, then the image under this is gonna be a line. But if that circle doesn't go through negative one, then the image is gonna be a, cir is gonna be a circle, okay? So for example, um, what is the image of this okay so this is um do you guys remember what object this is a circle a circle yes that's a circle and we can draw it here Um, does this circle go through a negative one? Does this circle contain negative one? Yes. Yes, negative one's right there. It's in the circle. That means the image will be 
will be a circle or a line? Line. Well, it contains negative one, so it's going to be a line. Okay. Okay. So you know already that the image is going to be a line. Okay. So we know the image is going to be a line. Um, what is, uh, so then all we have to do is maybe pick a few points. Maybe pick, uh, pick, a, pick a couple points on this circle. We know this goes to infinity. So we know that, um, we know negative one is going to go to infinity. What is, um, what is one going to go to? So we have one and we have I. Those are, those are the easiest ones to choose, I think. Okay, so f of one. Um, if you put the one in here for z, the one in for z, the numerator is one plus i, and then the denominator is one plus one. So we're going to get uh, one half plus i over two. So that goes to one half plus i over two. And what does i go to? That's going to be i plus i over i plus one or one plus i. So that's going to be two i over one plus i. And you can't leave it like this. So let's um, multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. And that's going to give us a two. And if you distribute the i, you've got i minus i squared. So that's two i plus one. And the denominator is going to be one. Is going to be two. Whoa! Wait a minute. So let's cancel. So it's going to be one plus i. Okay. So we know that um, it's going to go through. Uh, if that's one, and that's i, then this i point. Which let me label it with let me write, label this with the red x. That's gonna go to there, right? And we know that this point f of one is uh one half plus i over two. That's gonna go to here. Okay, so if you have a line that goes through those two, what's the line that goes through those two points? Well, why do you this is equals x, but yeah, but um, we're supposed to like put it in terms of v and u. Okay, so y equals x is the line. The v equals u would be the thing, or uh, the you could also say. The imaginary part of W equals the real part of W. Okay, that would be like an equation of it. Or maybe this form would be okay too. And then here's the here's a picture of it. So this maps to here. Okay. So and it's also interesting what's gonna happen is this part of the circle is gonna map to this part, right? And then um, this part of the circle is going to map to this. And then this part of the circle is going to map to that. Okay, so as you go like this on the circle, you're going back this way. Um, at some point, it's going to go through zero. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, negative. Oh, dang, negative I would have been the easiest point to choose. Oh, well, because that would have been zero already. Okay, so negative I. It's going to map to the origin. Okay, so that's some more uh, information there. Um, oh dear.
Another thing um, is mapping set map. Mappings involving one over z. So the reciprocal transformation. I know we talked about that before. But that is a Mobius transformation. So this whole circles to and lines, the circles and lines thing, that is true for this one. Okay, for the for the reciprocal transformation. Okay, so the first one that I want to discuss is this. What is the image? Two minus two equals one. Okay, so what kind of object is this? Circle. Yes, that's a circle. And we can, the center is at two, right? And the radius is one. So it's going to be, it's going to be like this. Okay, so the question is, is this going to map to a, this is a circle. Is it going to map to a circle or to a line? What do you guys think? Is the image going to be a circle or a line? Okay, what, okay, what point, what value of Z maps to infinity? On the, zero? Yes, zero maps to infinity. Okay, so this circle does not contain zero. Zero is all the way over here, right? This circle is not passed through zero. That means it will map to a circle. Yes, a circle. Good. Good, good, good. So that's really important. Doesn't contain zero. Doesn't contain the zero of the denominator. So, it's, so it won't so it'll map to a circle, not a one. Okay. Um, with this one, this is kind of symmetrical. So you can actually uh, take these two points, one and three. Okay, so what does one map to? If you go to one in here, you get one, right? You put a three in, what are you gonna get? One third. Good. Okay, so we know that this three, no, no hold on, let's, we know that this one is gonna map to one. And we know that the three is going to map to one third. Okay, now we also know some symmetry about these things. Um, the, the whatever this top part here maps to is going to be sort of the reflection of this part. Just because cause this is symmetric over here and then the reciprocal is going to maintain that, that symmetry. So that means that um, this top part has to map to the bottom part of the circle here. This is going to be a circle. This top part of the circle maps to the bottom part. And the bottom part of the circle is going to map to the top part. Okay. So that's, well, that's kind of, a, that's supposed to be a circle, but oh well. And Let's see here. What's the equation of this circle? Or first of all, what's the middle? What's the center? Two thirds. Yes, the center is two thirds. So that means that the equation for this circle is W minus two thirds equals, and what's the radius? One third. Yeah, one third. So the, the equation of the circle is W minus two thirds equals one third. 
or the modulus of W minus two thirds equals one third. Okay, uh, one interesting thing that I like to point out is that here, this two is the center, right? So two maps to one half. Of course, it's not a part of the object, okay? It's just the reference point for the circle. And then the one half is like, um, is like, um, where's one half? One half is like right there, right? Okay, so this guy, who's the center, maps over here, which is not the center. The center maps to something that's not the center. Ooh. Okay, so the center doesn't really necessarily, um, the center is not necessarily going to map to the center. So you just keep that in mind. So you can't use the center as one of your your points to determine the mapping. It doesn't, it's not going to work. Okay, so that's just a, little, a few tips right there. Um, let's see here. Oh, there's one other thing that I wanted to discuss. And let me see if I can find where it is in the book really quickly. It's fixed points. So let me see what page is fixed points on. Uh, hmm, I don't, I don't see it. Does anybody, anybody, can anybody see in the books where it talks about, um, let me write it down. I want to know where it talks about six points. Hmm, interesting. Where does it talk about that? It's in the exercises. Oh, it's in exercises. Okay, well, it doesn't talk about it in the book. Okay. So, um, okay, great. That's just in the exercises. Okay. So what that, what fixed points are is points where, um, that's true. So Z not the fixed point if it satisfies this condition right here. F of Z not equals Z not. Okay. So I want to give you an example, and that would be, Find the fixed point of this transformation here. So we have a, a Mobius transformation, Z minus two I over two I Z plus one. Okay, so remember fixed points are where if you plug that point in, you get itself back. So it maps, it maps that point so the Mobius transformation maps that point to itself. Okay, now, um, I'm gonna ask, how do you think we should go about trying to find the fixed points of this function? How can we find the fixed points of this function based on this information here? Okay, so it seems like nobody knows. You, you know, usually when I ask this question for the first time, nobody knows. I, in fact, I can't recall a time when anybody knew how to do that. Oh well. So here's what you do. You um, you 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 look at this. You do you solve this. So instead of z naught, you put z's in. Except you do it right here. So z minus two i over. 2iz plus 1 equals z. So you want to solve this. Um, you want to solve this equation right here. So the first thing is let's take this over to the other side. And we'll go ahead and distribute the z in. So that's 2iz squared plus z. And then 
this C and this C, um, they just cancel each other out. So that's good. Yay, I'm happy about that. And then, well, two I's can cancel. You have, really? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. So the two I's cancel, and you end up with negative 1 equals z squared, or z squared equals negative 1. Okay, so does anybody know what, what the two solutions to that are? To this equation? Plus or minus i. Yes, so there's i and there's negative i. Good. Thank you. Plus or minus i are the two solutions. And so those are the fixed points. Um, we can verify that, so check this out. So if we put in, if we, take, if we calculate f of i by putting an i in here and there, the numerator becomes i minus 2i, and the denominator comes two, becomes 2i two uh, times i, so that's i squared plus one, so that, um, what is that? The numerator becomes a negative i, and the denominator becomes 1 minus 2. That's negative 1, right? So that becomes i. So f of i equals i. And then if we calculate f of negative i, if there are negative i in there, we get negative i minus 2i in the numerator. The denominator, we're going to get, you put a negative i in here, you're going to get negative i squared, which is actually positive two. So you get negative three i over three, which is negative i. Okay, so that's equal to that. F of negative i is negative i. Okay, so that's, so that's the thing about fixed points. Um, and if you have a Mobius transformation and you go to find the fixed points, typically what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a quadratic equation and of course, quadratic equations have two solutions, right? Okay, so great. That's uh, six points. Okay, now what I want to do is talk some more about, okay, we'll come back to this uh, cross ratio. Okay, so this cross ratio can help you find um, Mobius transformation. You can literally take any three points and map them to any three other points. And there'll be a Mobius transformation that does that. Okay, so you could take any three points in the extended complex plane and map them to any other three points in the complex, extended complex plane. Okay, so we're gonna get to the cross ratio in a minute. We'll come back to that. Cause we already, we kind of like introduced it a little bit. But, um, usually, or a lot of the time, you don't have to even use the cross, cross ratio to figure out a mapping. Okay, so for example, um, let me give you an example here. So find a Mobius transformation and we're going to, we want, what I want to do is I want to map 2i to 0. I want to map infinity to 4, and I'm going to map i to 1. Okay? So I want those conditions right there. Okay, now, Mobius transformation has to look something like this. A z plus b over c z plus d. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, um, if I want to map 2i to 0, in other words, when I, put up, when I plug a 2i in for z, I want this whole thing to be 0. Okay, so plugging a 2i in for z get, should get, make the whole thing 0. What attribute does this have to have in order to accomplish that first goal right there? How can I accomplish this first one? 
So I'm just like, so I'm ignoring these two for now, and I'm only looking at this. What does this have to do in order to accomplish that? Would A and C contain I also? Okay, let me give you a hint. If the, in order to make the whole thing zero, you only need to make the numerator zero. The denominator, who cares? B has to be. As long as the denominator is not zero. What's that? B has to be negative to IA or something. You're pretty close. Um, we can, uh, you can rewrite it like this. If that's a Z, then what has to be here? Oops. Negative 2i. Minus 2i, right? Okay. So that will, so this right here, as long as I don't mess the denominator up, and that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. As long as I don't mess the denominator up, then this is, when I plug a 2i in, I'm going to get a 0. Okay. So that will guarantee this first one. And I'm still, so, so you notice that I can still make A, C, and D anything I want. A, C, and D can still be anything I want. Okay, now, let's look at this part right here. So after we've got that far, what will guarantee that an infinity will map to, map to four right here? Um, First of all, what would, so, so what will, if, if this is my function right here, what is, um, what is f of infinity going to be? If, if I plug in infinity in here, what's it going to be? Zero. Mm, not necessarily, no. No, it's, no, we don't want it to be zero. If it's going to be zero, then we're lost. We lost already because we wanted to be four, right? Sure. Okay, so think about it this way: What if you take the limit? Think of think of these as x's for a second. What if you take the limit as x goes to infinity? What are you going to get? What's that? A over c. Yes, it's going to be a over c. So. So it is also you can see that from here too, okay? So it's, it's if you have a polynomial to another one, and then these are both the same order, as you go to infinity, it's gonna go to the the quotient of these two coefficients. Yeah, over C. Okay. <clears throat> Dang it, this erasing is more too well. So um Let's see, in order to guarantee that, uh, what values of A and C can I choose that will make that, that will make that, that will make it be four? So I want this to be four, right? What's the easiest values of A and C to choose to make it, that makes it four? Four and one. Yeah, so four up here and just a one down here. Oh boy, that was, that was, that was that was crazy because we lost we just lost two coefficients we lost the a and the c right there, but we still have the d, and we just have this one more condition to do. Okay, so how can we? Um, so then we just want to force. Uh, we can still change this d around so that f of i is one. So what you can do. So let me go, this is the last condition. So you want f of i to be one. But f of i is going to be four times, you put i on there, that's an i minus two i. And then out here, down here it's i plus d, right? And you want that to be one. So 
So let's see here. Numerator is four times negative three i. And I can take this i plus d over here. <clears throat> so this is negative 12 i equals i plus d. That means d has to be, well, this is weird. Oh, the heck. No, I made a mistake. Negative. I made a mistake. This is um, this is negative i because it's like i minus two i is negative i. Okay, so that should be negative four i. So you said what? Negative five i. Okay, so then the answer would be. The answer is going to be f of z equals, um, we'll go off this one. So four times z minus two i, you can write it that way, all over z minus five i. Okay, so if you plug in and if you plug a 2i, that's going to be 0. If you plug in infinity, that's going to be 4. And if you plug in i in, then you're going to end up with 1. Okay, so that's the answer there. Um, let me do one more. One more quick example. Like this. Oh, dang. I don't know if you have from there. Okay, so let's go, let's say this. We'll say find Mobius transformation. Oops. With, um, you want two to go to infinity, and you want zero to go to i, and you want five to go to, to go to one. That's a one, not a point one. There we go. Okay, so here's the model that we're going after. F of z equals a z plus b over c z plus d. Okay, so if you want two to go to infinity, then how do you accomplish that? How do we make this satisfy the first condition? The denominator has to be zero. Yeah, so you want the denominator to be zero when um, z is two, okay? Now, so when you put a zero in, when you put a two in, I'm sorry, when you put a two in, that's gonna make the denominator zero, which will make it infinity. Okay, now you want the second condition, zero goes to i. And what do you use for that? Maybe we can just plug that in, right? What is f of zero? If you plug if you plug a zero in for z here, what do we get? B over negative two. Over negative two C, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's gotta be, that's supposed to be I. So that means that B has to be negative two C I. So how about we, how about we just make C one? And so then B has to be negative two I. Uh, that will get that will get us there, right? 
that becomes AZ minus 2i over, and this is just 1, so that's Z minus 2. So if you plug a 0 in, that's going to wipe all that out, and these, these negative twos are going to cancel, it's just going to get I. Okay, and then the last part, f of 5 has to be 1, so what do you do for that one? Plug in 5. Yeah, plug in 5. And it has to be 1. Okay, so here it's going to be 5a minus 2i, and this is 5 minus 3. Uh, I'll go ahead and say that's 3. So that's got to be 1. So that means 5a minus 2i has to be 3. Um, which means that 5a has to be 3 plus 2i. This is weird. So a has to be 3 fifths plus 2 fifths i. That's a. Okay, and so we just put that number there. 3 fifths plus 2 fifths i. That's your a times z minus 2i over z minus 2. And that, that transformation will um, that'll do the trick. It maps these three these three points to these three points. So do you mean that there's more than one solution? There, um, no, there's generally going to be only one solution. Well, when you plug in C, can you make C like two, then you got a different B? Oh yeah, we could do that. Let's see. Um, hmm. You're right. But does that lead to another solution? That's a good question. I don't think it does. So let's, let's say if we make... Five. So let's, let's, do, let's do this one. Let's say, say, let's say C was... 2, which means B would be um, negative 4i. So we're just going, we're going to alternate over here. So that means that we would have, we would have this. So we would have, um, let's A. Now we still have an AZ there. And then we'd have minus 4i. And then over here we would have Wait, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, C is 2. So that would be 2 times Z minus 2. Okay, then we want 5 to go to 1. So that's going to give us 5A minus 4I over 2 times 3 equals 1. So that means 5A minus 4I would have to be 6 this time. So 5A would have to be um, 6 plus 4i. So a would be 6 fifths plus 4 fifths i. Okay, and we would end up with, um, by plugging this back in, we'd have 6 fifths plus 4 fifths i and z minus 4i all over 2 times z minus 2. Okay, so what's going to happen though is this is this is exactly the same as this part of the thing. This one and that one are the same, except this is maybe more simplified because here you're going to factor a two out of here and factor a two out of there. When you factor a two out of there, you're going to get the negative two i, right? Factor a two out of here, you're going to get three fifths plus two fifths, and that and that two that you factor out is going to cancel with this two. And so this two is going to get canceled by the two that you factor out, and then you'll just have the same thing. So they're the same. Got it. <clears throat> so there's just one, there's typically just only one way 
if you you've given like three points, there's only one way to map those to three other points. There's only one Mobius transformation that does that. But you know, you can choose any three points to map to any three other points, and there will be a Mobius transformation that does that. But it's going to be the only one. Okay. So, um, and then finally, one more thing that I wanted to do, because you might have to do this in the homework, is map one Mobius transformation to another one. Okay, so for example, so let's, let's say the problem is find Mobius, that maps um, i to zero, one to negative one plus i, and three to three minus i. Okay, so the reason that the ones that we've done so far have worked is because here is a zero and an infinity, and then here is a zero and an infinity. Wait, zero and infinity. Okay, so when you've got like zeros and infinities, then it simplifies your thing quite a bit, and you can just exploit that. Okay, but here we only have the zero, they have no infinity. Okay, so that's going to be kind of hard to exploit. So, what you can do is this. You can think of it as two different uh, transformations. Okay, so, so instead of looking at it this way, you break it up into this. So you have, you still have I1 and 3, right? But instead of mapping them to zero, this and this, you map it to zero, and then a one, and then infinity. Okay? And that will be, we'll call that one F. Or we'll call it, we'll call it, we'll call it, yeah, we'll call it F. Okay, and then these three points, um, We'll map zero to zero. We'll map one to negative one plus i, and we'll map infinity to three minus i. So that will, and that will be g. So we can do this, and we can do that, and then we just take the composition. Okay. Another way to look at this. So, um, so hold on. So g inverse. Let me get this straight. So G inverse. So this is G. So G inverse will map um, zero to zero, negative one plus I to one, and then three minus I to infinity. So zero on infinity. Okay, that one, so I don't need to like look at this. We've got three points mapping to zero, one, and infinity. Here we have three points mapping to zero, one, and infinity. And over here, um, this cross this cross ratio, this cross ratio right here, it maps z1 to 0, z2 to 1, and z3 to infinity. Okay. So, You can write down what the this cross ratio is. This this one right here. So I'm just I'm just writing I'm just copying down the cross ratio. So z1 is i, z2 is one, and z3 is three. Okay, and I'm just copying down the cross ratio. So it's um, z minus z1. So z1 is i, and then it Z2 minus Z3, so this one not, that's going to be negative 2, so it's 1 minus 3. And then the denominator is Z minus Z3, so that's Z minus 
three, and then it is C2 minus C1, so it's this one minus that one, so that's one minus I. And that's our F of Z. And we can simplify that, I suppose. Uh, ouch, maybe not. Okay, maybe we'll do it like that. Okay, then um, G inverse. For G inverse, we have Z1 is zero, Z2 is negative one plus I, and Z3 is three minus I. Okay, so that's going to be okay, Z minus C1, that's going to be Z minus zero. And then Z2 minus Z3, that will be this minus this. And then Z, Z minus Z3, that's going to be Z minus this, that's minus three plus I. Oh dear, this is really looking nasty. Z2 minus Z1, so that's that minus that, so negative one plus I. And so G inverse of Z is Z times negative four plus two I right there. And then down here it's Z minus three plus I. Oh dear. Ouch, this is painful. Yeah, this is quite painful actually. Hmm. Okay. So, um, there's only four minutes left in class and I don't think it's very productive to go through this, but I'm just, I'm, so what you would do, so here, let me just show you how you a little bit, I'll go a little bit more. I'm not going to completely finish this problem, but this part is going to be, um, negative four plus two I times Z over, and then if I distribute this in, I'm gonna get negative one plus I Z, that's distributing this times the Z. And then this times this is gonna give me, what is that? So this times this, that's three, and then minus one, that's two. And then there's I, that's negative I, and negative three I, so that's minus four I. Is that right? Yeah, something like that. Okay. So this one is a Mobius transformation. So A is on, well, let me just mark it here. So this is my A right here. This is A. And then here, this is where B would be. So, but, so B, B is zero. And this is C, and this is D, okay? So A, Z plus B over C, Z plus D. Okay, kind of early on, we said that the inverse is given by this equation right here. This is page 35. So the inverse of a transformation is dz minus b over negative cz plus a, okay? So that means, if we come back to here, we all know that the inverse of an inverse is actually the original one. Okay, so that means that G of Z is gonna be DZ minus B over negative CZ plus A, okay? So that's, so you just plug everything in. So the D is this one, so two minus four I. Z, the B is zero, so that's gone. C is right here, but you're taking negative C, so that would be one minus I. And then the A, plus A, so it would be this one here. 
Okay, so there's my, here's my F, here's my G. So the Mobius transformation will do this. Will be the composition of two Mobius transformations. Will be you do F first because F will take I to zero, one to one, and three to infinity. So you do that first. Then you apply G, which does the um does the backwards of this so it'll take that's like zero to zero and it'll take one to negative one plus i and it'll take infinity to three minus i okay so all we'd have to do is like calculate what this is and that's a lot of work and then and i don't think it's necessary to do that because i think um you guys have an understanding of how to do that so that would be so this would be the answer right here but of course you'd have to calculate it okay great so that looks like um looks like that's about all the time we have